This is a tutorial on graphing percentage or accuracy in Google Sheets, um, generating line graphs. Um, so some things that you might use percentage for would be percentage of opportunities. So probably the most common examples in our classrooms would be students who might have a goal to request a break. Um, I could represent that as frequency. I could graph and say today they did ask for two breaks and three then one, then five, um, that's great. Like they're asking for several breaks a day instead of engaging in problem behavior. However, uh, maybe they're having an average of 10 um, episodes a day where they're engaging in tantrum behavior to terminate work demands. Um, so all of a sudden now requesting two breaks a day doesn't look so great because two out of 10, that's only 20% of the time that they're actually using the replacement behavior and then 80% of the time that they're needing support or engaging in problem behavior uh, to access their placement behavior. That's why um, I think it kind of better represents the data to graph these types of things as percentage of opportunities. Um, you could also do um, accuracy. So maybe I'm showing um, there, maybe I'm an overachiever and I want to graph my academic data and I'm graphing their accuracy and um, so the percentage that they're independently answering single digit addition problems, I could do that. Um, so I'm going to use the break example just because that's something we frequently do. Um, you could also use it for other adaptive skills. Um, for example, just frequent uh, percentage of opportunities that they're independently making requests. Maybe for some of our kiddos who have really limited functional communication, maybe that's something we're directly or intensely, intensively progress monitoring. Maybe we're targeting a certain core word and we want to see that them using that appropriately within context is increasing. Um, so like always in column A, I want to start with the date. And column B is going to be um, with percentage of opportunities. Column B is always going to be the number of times that they did the behavior. Column C is going to be um, the total number of opportunities. So if I'm taking break requesting data, maybe I have a data sheet where I'm putting the, um, the date, I'm circling yes or no each time for whether or not they requested a break. So I'm going to go through now, I'm going to count all my yeses. So this would be total um, opportunities that break was independently requested all right and it wrapped it again so column b is the number of times that they're doing the behavior um, column c is the total number of opportunities they had this would be the same for percentage of opportunities or accuracy so i'm going to say total opportunities to request a break per day um, so Again, this column, I'm counting how many yeses I had for the day. Yes, they requested a break. Over in column C, I'm counting how many data points do I have for the day or how many times was I circling yes or no. All right, so I'm just going to say September 16th was the first day. Click on this. Yes, it's a Monday. Uh, click on the date. Little blue square pops up. Trying to hover over this so I get a plus. Let me try again. I'm going to try the next one. I can see that it keeps showing up but then going away. Well, if I was able to get my little plus, you can see it keeps. There we go. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, so I can drag down. Um, then I have a full week. So let's say this first data point they requested twice. However, they um, were exhibiting tantrum behavior 10 times. So really they had 10 opportunities to request that break or maybe they're exhibiting precursor behaviors the next day, three, then five one and then six two and then three one and then two all right and then this column is going to be 
percentage of opportunities that student independently requested a break per day. All right, it wrapped it. If it for some odd reason doesn't wrap it for me, let's say I'll make this really small. Oh no. Let's say it was overflowing into other columns. So like right here, see how it's going into column F. Could always click on this, do format, text wrapping, wrap. I don't want overflow. Okay. And then again, you can always just click on the column. You can make it wider if you wanted to or narrower. So right here now, I'm going to need a percentage. I could do the math and say two divided by 10 times 100, that's 20% and type in 20. Um, but if I'm taking data and I'm graphing this for the quarter, like I could have like 30, 40 data points and I don't want to take out a calculator or do mental math times 40. So I could just put a formula in here and make my life simpler. Um, so for any percentage of opportunity formula, it's going to be equals this first column. So B2, um, that's my first data point, divided by C2, right? Because that's B, column B is the behavior, column C is total opportunities, and then times 100, because I want this to be a percentage. Um, so the multiplication symbol for formulas in Google Sheets would be the asterisk, uh, and it's a little star, so it's shift, and then it's your eight key has a little star, um, times 100, tab, it says 20, um, two divided by 10 times 100, that would be 20%. I don't need to continue to type this formula in every single box. I can drag the blue circle, pull it down, and it's going to put the formula for me. You can see right here, it's put a bunch of decimal points after um, the data point. I'm gonna go up here to decrease decimal places. I don't. I usually like for it to only have two, sometimes one after the decimal point. I don't want it to have like 10 things. Probably not a huge thing in the grand scheme of things when you're graphing, but visually, I just don't like the way it looks. All right, so when I graph, I'm going to, as always, click on column A. I'm going to hold down shift, and then I'm moving over to percentage of opportunities, right? This is the data that I want. And then it's insert chart, also known as graph. It has guessed that I want a line graph. Great. So I'm going to look at the title. I can go under customize. I can go under chart and title axis, axes. Um, Chart title, I could edit right here, or I could click, um, click directly here and change it. So percentage of opportunities that student independently requested a break per day. Now over here on the vertical axis, this is really long. So I just, I just wanted to say percentage of opportunities that the important information for the vertical axis is that it's percentage. I'm going to go down. I'm going to scroll down to series, right? Okay. I'm going to add, I don't like the fact that it just has like the zigzag. So I like to put the um, points back in so I can see, look, I can see I have five data points along this line. All right. And then if I'm so inclined, I could change the color. I can make this green if I wanted to. Um, Again, sometimes I change the color when I'm tracking multiple behaviors or I just want the graphs if I'm putting them in a document to share with a parent. Sometimes I just change the color of the line so that, because it defaults to blue, um, it just makes it visually stand out a little bit more. You can do that. If I wanted to, I could insert a trend line. It's going up, so that means their accuracy is increasing. Um, it does linear, but there's these other types of trend lines. Um, I like to change the color. I usually make my trend lines red just so that they stand out. Uh, another important thing too is anytime that I'm graphing percentage, I want to look at the um, at the the y axis, y to the sky, um, the y or the uh, the vertical axis. If I'm graphing percentage, this should always go zero to a hundred. Um, if this graph were to go like for example, because this data point right here 
is probably about like 72. No, wait. Uh, probably like 60, 64. So it's not quite halfway, so that would be like 70. Um, so let's say this data point fell below 60. It would have capped this graph, graph at 60. Um, and it even looks like their accuracy is high. So it can be very misleading. Um, it's going to select for you what it thinks that the y-axis should be. But if it's percentage, it should always represent that as 0 to 100 because it's a percentage. Like I said, um, it's going to pick the highest date. <laughs> it's going to cap like your y-axis as your highest data point. So if all my data points fell below 40, my axis would be 0 to 40, um, which is kind of going to under underrepresent things. So I can change that by going under vertical access because that's what I'm editing. Then if I scroll down, there's a min and a max value. So I'm going to click on that. I want it to start at zero and I want it to go to 100. Right. And see now the line goes down a little bit lower. So now my accuracy actually and then it has changed this to increments of 25, which is fine. Um, now it doesn't look like their requesting breaks as frequently as it did before. Um, it can kind of skew my data if, you know, like I said, it might only do this zero to 50, or if it did this like zero to 70, that would cap off right here and it'd be like, wow, they have some really high data points. So make sure that if you're doing percentage, you are always um, changing this to zero to 100. I'm gonna X out of this now. All right. And then I can click on this. I can go to move to own sheet if I want. That will put it on its own tab. Um, if I have like a bunch of stuff going on, like on my raw data tab, sometimes I just like to move it, move to own sheet. Even though it's on its own sheet, if I go back to, which is blocked over here, if I go over here where my raw data tab is, um, any new data that I take, it will auto populate in this sheet. If I copy this chart, I can copy and paste it into a document maybe where I have some narrative summaries um, because I can actually link it to this chart. When I copy and paste, it's automatically linked. Um, so when I update my data for this um, in my Google Docs document, um, it will update the graph as well, right? And that is how you would use line graphs to graph percentage of opportunities or accuracy.